Hi. Hi, my name is Shui Wang. Today, I'd like to give you um, the introduction to simple mass spec modeling for data scientists. Um, the agenda of today's lecture um, is going to be first on this introduction of uh, mass spec modeling. The second is how to use uh, Python in R packages for modeling, and followed by some examples. So first of all, I'd like to introduce you the concept of um, operational research. Operational research um, involves a variety of techniques um, that aim to create math models that um, describe real or theoretical systems. So it aims to solve the problems uh, for um, provide you know, um, optimized solutions to improve system efficiency and um, to support decision making. It is the scientific approach to make uh, the best decision. The model is usually under conditions, uh, requires um, the allocation of um, uh, sort of uh, resources, for example, time and budget. So since OR requires the use of models which have a mathematical representation of actual system, so the mathematical modeling describing a system at a high level abstractions or uh, simplification, which ignores the irrelevant uh, details, only keep uh, the relevant details of a certain system. So here's a famous quote from George um, Box, all models are wrong, but some are useful, right? It does indicate the level of abstraction. So here is a hollow world example of a mass model. So for example, a city is reviewing the location of its fire station, right? The city is made up of a number of neighborhoods, one to 11, and these are the boundary of uh, each neighborhood. So we have some rules. A fire station can be placed in any no uh, neighborhood and the objective is to minimize the number of um, file station used. Now, how do you make decisions? What are the rules? You can think about um, maybe the population density of each neighborhood. You would assume you want to place a file station at um, a neighborhood with the highest um, population density, right? And you probably don't want to put a fire station into area with uh, very less people living there. Okay, so and there are also probably consider the traffic on the road, you know, conditions, or any constructions information in any of the neighborhood. Those are fine in real world, but in this example, we just use a simplified rule. It is able to handle the files for both its neighborhoods in any adjacent neighborhood, okay? So as long as we have a um, fire station at um, neighborhood one, um, since two, three, four adjacent to neighborhood one, we don't have to place um, the, uh, a fire station uh, in, in two, three, or four, okay? Some simple rules. So how do we um, use, how to write down the decision and the goals and um, the restrictions into the formula. This is the concept of abstraction. Okay. In, in, in all, all the uh, optional research problem or mass modeling, we need to create, uh, first of all, a variable. Okay. First, we create a variable xi for each city. So the variable xi will be one if we place a station in the city and zero otherwise. So if I, if I place a fire station at neighborhood one, x1 is gonna be one, otherwise um, it's zero, okay? So what are the constraints? Another major uh, component of the modeling, massive modeling is constraints, okay? What are constraints? We, we create a simple rule says, it's able to 
handle the files for both this neighborhood and any adjacent neighborhood. For example, if I place file station one, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to place file station at two, three, or four. So mathematically, this is written as as x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 and greater or equals to one. So basically the set region of the um, neighborhood, one, two, three, four, there's four neighborhoods we want um, to have at least one fire station. Okay, similarly for um, fire uh, neighborhood two, two, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x5, it's gonna be at least um, one, a greater or equals to one. Make sense? Okay, then what's the objective? The objective is usually minimize or maximize something, okay? And in this case, we're trying to minimize the number of fire station used. It's written as X1 plus X2 plus X3, you know, until X11. The range of this is what? It's zero to 11, right? So without any constraints, we can say we want to uh, place any, uh, every, um, we have, I uh, want to place um, once fire station to any city, okay, each city. So the range is going to be one to uh, zero to 11 in this case. So this is level of abstraction. The shape, you know, it's, it's a lot of shape, you know, a lot of angles, it's not um, very clear. The boundary, you know, it's kind of blurry. It's not certain, it's very dynamic. Uh, and then we want to simplify the world with, you know, the shape is something is fixed and the boundary is cleared. And there's some certainty with uh, the simplified world. And um, it's not that dynamic. And then we, based on the simple, simplified word, world, we create a model, which is even more abstracted. Okay. So the course agenda, first like to um, show you some successful applications of option research models. And then we're gonna talk about opt optimization modeling. Um, there's some definition concepts and then followed by algebraic representation and the model formulations. And then we're gonna talk about um, some um, use, how to use uh, R and Python packages due to the modeling and what is optimizer or solver. And um, I'll give you some examples uh, in the end. Okay, so here are some applications of option research models. So we call optimize, uh, option research the science of making things better. So it's um, widely used in the audit domain in industry, okay? For example, transportation, we have um, bike sharing. We, we have uh, applications regards to city bikes. So for city bikes, one of the most important thing is to um, where to put the bike, you know, basically it's called location selection, okay? And the study found that 10% of increase in bike availability would increase ridership more than um, 12%. Also, for example, the city school bus. Okay, we can, um, there's a paper published, um, talk about the routing and bell time optimization. So in this case, Boston, the city of Boston saved five millions in year savings, okay? Maintaining service quality despite a 50 bus fleet reduction. Okay, we can also use uh, operating research models for sports. For example, game scheduling, and if we use um, option research model to, to like allocate their home and gray game for each team. So, and also public policy, we have examples for um, law enforcement, the inmate assignment and scheduling problem. Okay. And for education, we can um, assign the scholarship 
for example, the merit-based scholarship allocate to maximize enrollment for school. There is a case that um, increased 11 and 13% yearly enrollment on the same, same budget. And we can also uh, schedule the course and exam, um, scheduling system to allocate classroom more time for course and exam. And actually Bill Gates talk about his own experience on his um, next Netflix documentary episode two regarding to this topic. And then for retail, we can use operating risk models to optimize the inventory. Okay, a study found that reduction in inventory by more than 120 millions and a reduction in labor costs equivalent to $10 million per year. So and what is algebraic modeling language? AML, um, a high level on computer programming language for describing and solving the high complexity problems for large scale uh, mathematics computation. So one particular advantage of uh, AML is um, its, its similarity to their syntax through mathematical notation of the problem. Basically, once you have the mathematical notation written in the paper, uh, the syntax of AML is very similar. Okay, from a modeling uh, computer programming language perspective, it's very similar to what you wrote on the paper. So. We have some commercial AML such as AIMS, Ampo Games, uh, IBM OPL. We also have um, some open source ones such as Minilink, Jump for um, Julia, Pyomo for uh, Python and Pelp also for Python, and OMPR for R. So o uh, AML allows for very concise and readable definition problems in the domain of the optimization, okay? So it supports, um, it makes elements such as sets, indices, uh, impressions, and um, sparse index uh, more available. Okay. However, AML does not solve the optimization problem directly. So instead it calls um, external algorithm to obtain the solution. These algorithms are called optimizer or solver, can handle certain kind of uh, mathematical problem, uh, such as linear programs, integer programs, mixed linear programs, um, nonlinear program, etc. Okay, so there's some popular um, solver for linear and integer uh, optimization problem which are um, the most, uh, the top. There's some popular soft, so, there's some popular solvers for linear and integer uh, optimization problems, um, which are, there's some popular solvers for linear and integer optimization problems. Uh, we're gonna cover uh, mostly integer, uh, linear and integer optimization problem uh, in this class. Um, for example, the CPLEX Groovy and FICO Express are the commercial one, and they do have, there's some popular solvers for linear and integer uh, optimization problems. Uh, we will cover uh, mostly linear and integer um, problems uh, for the example. So I think the top three um, commercial solvers are CPLEX, Groovy, and FICO Express. And they also have academic license for free. And there's some old popular uh, open source one, SCIP, GLPK, and CBC, and Symphony. Uh, in this course class, we're mostly gonna use open source one. Um, and we're going to use GLPK and CPC for the class. So, so like we covered before, optimization modeling has um, three parts. First is uh, the digital variables, which are also called controllable variables, influence the performance of the 
system. Most of the um, optimizer modeling problem has objective or, ab or multiple objectives. Objective function is a function we wish to maximize or minimize. Okay, it reflects the relation between the different variables and, and goal we want to achieve. And um, optimism modeling also have some certain constraints, you know, a set of restrictions of um, variables. Here example. So, so we have examples, say have two variables, um, both of them are continuous. This is the range from a zero to infinity. We have one constraint here, three X plus four Y greater than one. And the objective is to minimize x or, uh, 2x plus 3y, okay? And we use R's uh, OMPL package um, for um, this um, simple example. First, we load on the libraries, and then we create something called MIP model, okay? And we add some variables. The first variable x type is continuous, okay? I mean, okay, then we add a second variable type e also equals to continuous, whereas um, we can set up a lower bound in this case, um, L, L, L lower bound equals to zero. And we can also set the bounds outside, outside this uh, variable, add variable function. We can set um, the bounds for X and lower bound equals to zero, okay? And then our objective is two X plus three Y and we want to minimize this, and we can add the constraints, which is 3x plus 4y greater, e, great or equals to one. Um, yeah, this should be uh, the equal sign here. And we solve the model, and we use a solver called a GLPK. So this is a very simple um, um, way to just formulate um, this um, optimization uh, model. Similarly, same example, we, we use uh, Python's PyAlmo package. We load some uh, uh, library and we create a model. And then we uh, specify the variables X and Y. Okay, variable domains to non-negative reals. Okay. And the first constraint is being a hey, three times models X, which is the variable plus four um, times y, okay, greater or equals to uh, one. And the model objective here is um, 2x, 2x plus 4y, right? And then we solve this um, problem using GLBK, and the default parameter uh, is um, minimization. Then we just solve this, okay? And so we should remove this CA here, remove this. And there's some reference for Python in R, okay? 